Because purpose, because is, purpose operating is operating inside of you. For those of you that are taking notes, at the top of your paper, put the attitude of a survivor. The attitude of a survivor. And so I came to the conclusion that there's a particular attitude that survivors have. There's a particular set of characteristics that survivors obtain that allows them to keep surviving, despite the obstacles, despite everything that happens to them, they still survive because they have this attitude about them. And so the first person I thought about when I thought of a survivor is my, my big cousin Q, my big cousin, a man by the name of Daquan McCain. Uh, we call him Quan. We call him Quan. We call him Q. And so he was born to his mother at a young age. His father figure was never really in his life. And so he adopted his uncles and his older brother, Shantae, as his role models, as his father figures. And so when Quan was seven years old, his mother had gotten into an altercation with another man. And so if you're from where I'm from, if, if, if you're a female, you get into it with a man, you're calling your brother, right? You're calling your brother. So she called her brother, her brother Dwayne, and she, she called him like, man, dude, messing with me, like, this happened, that's happened. So, and Dwayne was home, it was Christmas holiday, it was Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, Dwayne was home from the Marines. He, I'm telling you, you don't want Dwayne looking for you. I'm telling you, he caught these, like these, you know what I'm saying? Dark skin, like, crazy. This, this is not the, the kind of guy that you want looking for you. And so she tells him about the situation, and he goes and he finds this man that had an altercation with his sister. And so he walks up to the man, walks up on him, before he can even say anything, boom! Shot him dead, killed him. Cold blood. Cold blood. No words. Cold blood. Dead. On sight. How you think his mother felt about that? That was her situation. Right? How do you think she felt with that? You know, that what comes with that? Uh, depression, anxiety, right? And, and it's so, what that developed into, she began to use drugs. She began, to, she, she began to get a dependency on crack cocaine, right? And, and so, Kwani was seven years old. His older brother, Shante, four years older than him. Both of them in elementary school. And their mother would be gone for weeks at a time because she had this dependency, right? She had this addiction of, on crack cocaine and, and she would leave for weeks at a time. And his older brother, four years older than him, both of them ride the same bus to the same elementary school. And his older brother would come home and cook for him, get him dressed. They're kids, 11 years old, nine years old, right? And so, eventually, they got taken away. They got taken away from their mother. They went and stayed with their grandmother for a short time period. They came back. And to their mother when she began to get in order, even though she was still using drugs, right? And, and this, these are the words that he used when he described this to me. He said, my brother and I, we encouraged her to get off of drugs. He said, we never downplayed her. We never, we never looked down on her. We never said, mom, why are you doing this to us? He said, we encouraged her to get off of drugs. 1994, she went cold turkey, never used drugs again in her life, right? That same year, his older brother, Shante, his father figure, the one that took care of him when his mom was gone, right? That same year, 1994, he had a son named Teray. That's my partner. That's my dog. That's my cousin. That's my blood, right? We went to high school together. And so he had that son, 1994, right? 1996, Shante died in a car accident. He left behind a one or two year old son, my cousin Teray, right? And so Kwani had to deal, he had to deal with A, his, his brother, his, his father, his best friend, all that in one, passing. He had to deal with the fact that now his nephew is fatherless, 
right? He had to deal with uplifting his mother and his younger sister. He said he couldn't even grieve right because he had, to, he had his mother in one arm, he had his younger sister in the other arm, right? He couldn't even grieve right. He was 16 years old when that happened, right? He was in high school. He said he took one week off, one week off of school, just so he can cope with it, so he can be there for his mother, so he can be there for his younger sister, so he can be there for his nephew, right? He took one week off of school. He said he came back that same semester. He got a 4.0, the only 4.0 he ever had in high school. What is that? What is that attitude? When you get adversity, you, you bend back. You, you, you perform worse when you get adversity. He came back to school, got a 4.0 GPA, the best GPA he ever had in his whole high school career after his brother died. And you complaining. Cause you, don't, Cause you don't like the cat food. <laughs> Cause you don't like your teacher, your professor. She don't know how to teach right. You complain about that, his brother died, he came back, got a 4.0. The next semester, 3.8. He graduated high school, magna cum laude. Easy. That attitude of a survivor, right? The attitude of a survivor, right? And so he went on to college, first generation college student. First generation college student, he went to Eastern Michigan University. He, he, he obtained an integrated degree in information technology and business administration. A five-year program he finished in five years. While still going back, back and forth, taking care of his nephew like he was his own son. And so when he graduated, he had multiple job offers. He had job offers on the east, on the west, south. He had job offers everywhere. And guess what he did? He came back home so he could take care of his nephew. So he could take care of his, he came back home. He's still talking 60, 70, 80,000 a year. He turned that down and said, I'm coming home. I'm coming home because my nephew need me. He don't have no father right now. I got to be his father. Then he came back home. He came back home to be a role model for people like me. Right? And so this goes into my first point. Why do you do what you do? Why? Why do you do what you do? That's a real question. Somebody, why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? Anybody, come on, take a hand. Let's get it. Okay. Let's get it. It's become habitual. You don't even think about it no more. It's like routine. Okay. Yeah. It's a habit. Okay, what's up? Make the family proud. Make the family proud. Parents. Parents, okay. People that look up to you. Determination. Determination. Be a better role model. Be a better role model. Okay, right. So, so I want y'all to think about it like this, right? How did you get here? Somebody sacrificed for you to sit in the seat that you're in right now. Somebody sacrificed for you to be here. You're in debt to somebody. But you acting like it's all about you. What's wrong with you? You acting like the class, like that's your class, it's all about me, if I don't wanna go to class, I'm not going to class, right? But you don't understand the sacrifices your parents made for you to sit in that class, to be able to go to school, it costs thousands of dollars to be here. It's people that's, that's at home, like I don't have the money to go to college, I don't wanna go to college, but I can't. And y'all sitting here taking it for granted, right? So, so everybody on your paper, right? At the top right, why I do what I do. And then I want you to take a second, really take a second and think about it. Why do you do what you do? And write it down. Take your time. I want it all. Write it all down. Why do you do what you do?
And so what I want you guys to do, when you finish that list, right, every morning when you wake up, read that. Because I promise, if it's all about you, you'll quit every time. You will quit every time. It's easy to let yourself down. I can't let my mom down. I can't let my pop down, right? But I can let me down. That's easy. I got a nephew that looks up to me. I can't let him down. I got to do it for him. Y'all, y'all sitting here listening to me right now. I have to be the example, right? I have to be the example. I can't let y'all down. Because if it's about you, you, you quit every time. So every morning when you wake up, read that. Read why you do what you do, because it'll help you get through the day, right? It'll help you get through the day. My second point, write down, outlast adversity. Outlast adversity. And so what you guys need to understand is there are some things in life that you just have to outlast, right? There are certain things in life that, that take place for a long time period and you just gotta stay down and wait for it to be over, right? And so like Steve Harvey, after his, first, after his first wife and him divorced, he was homeless. He slept in his car. You know those square little igloo uh, coolers with the handle on it? He put that in his back seat, that was his refrigerator. He, he used to shower at truck stops and at pool showers. But, but peep this, that, that didn't just happen one year. That didn't just happen two years. That happened three years. He was homeless for three years. And you can't make it through a semester. Three years he was homeless, he had kids. He had two kids. You don't have nobody to take responsibility for, but you, and you can't make it through a semester. You have to outlast it. Your teacher don't like you, that's cool, outlast it. This paper hard, it's eight pages, it's 10 pages. Go ahead, write it, outlast it. Because I promise, it's not always gonna be a struggle, but sometimes the struggle takes place longer than we want it to, right? Fruits of the spirit, what's one of the fruits of the spirit? Long suffering, not short suffering. <laughs> the, short, the suffering is not gonna be short, right? Long suffering. Understand what I'm saying? And so, my, la my last point. Hunt. You gotta hunt. Understand this. In life, you only eat what you kill. You only eat what you kill. And so the reason why you're not eating, because you're not working hard enough to hunt. You get some adversity, right? and you don't, you don't want to hunt no more. You, you, you got to have the attitude of survivor to where if, despite what you're going through, despite your circumstance, you still hunt. You still hunt. And so another thing I, I want you to write down, write down what's on the menu. And write whatever's on your menu, whatever you're hunting for, whether that be a job, whether that be an internship, whether that be all A's, whether that be a, a particular assignment, whether that be provided for, for your family, right on there, what's on the menu? tell me, what's stopping you from getting what's on the menu? It's a real question. Yourself. Anybody else? Break yourself. Okay. Anybody else? What's stopping you from getting whatever you put down? Go ahead. Persistence. Persistence. Okay. Excuses. <coughs> Excuses. That's a good one. Temptation. Temptation. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. Mm, I like that. 
Nothing. Anybody else? Consistency. And so let me tell you this. The reason why a lot of you guys aren't getting what's on your menu is because you quit after the first hunt. If you quit after the first hunt, right, you chase it down. You don't get it. Now y'all discouraged. Y'all, y'all. Y'all need somebody to encourage y'all. Y'all need to call me so I can come in here and motivate y'all. <laughs> as soon as the, the first hunt, right? You gotta learn how to hunt. Like I said, you only eat what you kill. You might not kill it on the first try. And so, write this down. Remain positive. <clears throat> when you hunt, remain positive. I got that. All right, so we got attitude of a survivor. What's the first point? What's number one? Why do you do what you do? What's that second point? Outlast adversity. What's that third point? Uh huh. You gotta hunt. You only eat what you kill. So I want you guys to go back and look at these notes, right? If you need to read these notes every morning, I have something I read every morning. Certain passages, certain scriptures certain quotes that I read every morning, right? You have, to, you have to get intentional. You have to be intentional about how you operate, right? There has to be some type of intention when you get up in the morning. Some type of intention. So take these, take these notes. Take, the, take this attitude of a survivor and use it so that you can make it through. That you can make it through your classes. Some of y'all, y'all classes isn't even the worst. Y'all gotta go home. It's worse at home than it is here. It's not even about school for you. Some of y'all living in the slums, right? If I go back to where I'm from, it's people that are not doing nothing. It's people that I, that I love that's living a foul life. You understand what I'm saying? So think about that. Read that every morning, man. Be intentional. Any questions? Any statements? Go ahead. I have a question. Why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? I have my nephew looking up to me. I have my mother and father that both still working, still providing for me. They put me in school. You understand what I'm saying? I have you guys that are looking up to me. So that's the reason why I do what I do, just to name a few. And every morning when I wake up, I wake up usually 5 o'clock. 5.30 every morning, it don't really matter what I have to do because I'm that intentional, right? And so I wake up and I think, why, why am I here? What am I doing? I go through and I read my morning passages, right? I go through and I pray, I talk to God, right? And I do all this, and I'm, by the time I'm finished with this, there's nothing that can stop me. You can put a brick wall in front of me and I run through. You understand what I'm saying? Before I go to sleep, right? The unconscious mind never sleeps. Remember that. Write that down. Matter of fact, write that down. The unconscious mind never sleeps. So every time when I go to sleep, I have something inspirational and motivational I'm um, listening to it. Every time, I kid you not, before I go to sleep, it might be some Eric Thomas, it might be a sermon, anything. Because the unconscious mind never sleeps. I'm that intentional. You have to be that intentional. Anybody else? When you go through failure, you. when I go through failure, <laughs> <laughs> the main way that I cope with failure is to remain positive. It's that positivity that I talked about when you hunt. You gotta stay positive when you hunt. And, and one thing I, that I like to do, and also I self-reflect every, every night before I go to sleep. I reflect on what I did, I reflect on what I could have done better. And what that does, that encourages me to get back up early. So when I when I encounter failure, it gives me just that much that much energy and motivation to, to be able to take the next day on. It actually so some people when they fail, they just get discouraged. When I fail, I get encouraged. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know that failure was a piece to the puzzle that didn't need to be there. Understand what I'm saying? Anybody else? 
How do you stay positive when things get bad? I pray. I pray. That's one thing I, I always have to do. Sometimes I just have to lean on God. Straight up. Like, no way around it. Sometimes I just have to lean on God. So, like, what's your drive? Like, what keeps you going? What keeps me going? Let's back to what my man's asked me. Um, it's not about me. It's about people that have invested in me, people that are looking up to me. And so that continually drives me. It continually keeps me going. Anybody else, what's up? My days are to the T. To the T. To the T. So I, I know I wake up 5.30. Depending on the day, I, I go I go get breakfast, go to the library, do whatever I got to do, homework-wise, um, wh whatever I have to do. I'm in the process of writing a book right now. Um, whatever I have to do, I do it. And then I have class, I have clients, and everything is set up in a way where it's completely structured. And so I'm obsessed with efficiency, right? So any second that I have has to be productive. So I have a gap in between my classes versus just going, taking a nap, chilling. I use that gap to get things done, to continue to be productive. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to get to the point where you're obsessed with efficiency, right? Anybody else? Good. Would he, would he say that number one influence that inspired you to do public speaking and talk about not to let them, you know, turn the message to a person who's been writing? So, I never had an issue speaking. I, I just didn't have much to say, or I didn't have something that was worth listening to, so I thought. And so, I began speaking with a friend of mine asked me to speak to a group of kids at a sports camp years, a couple years back, like two years back. And so I spoke to the kids, and the response that I got from them and their parents motivated me to keep doing it. And like going back to my cousin Kwani, my big cousin, who I just said has that attitude of a survivor, he continually motivated me, and his life was an example for me. And I've also had role models and people that have mentored me in speaking. And so, if that's something that you want to do, do it. The only thing that ever stopped me from speaking was me. Straight up. Anybody else? Took classes, had seven classes, failed most of them. GPA fell down to 1.18. Had to come back home, work at McDonald's. We all know McDonald's is, is a crap job. Right. My parents, everybody was like, you know, you're going to community college, you don't finish your GPA, you're not going back, that's a party school, you're doing this, you're doing that. I said, this is much bigger than me, this is much bigger than me, this is much bigger. This is about somebody who is a low income person who might not think they can make it in college to some extent. Um, so I came back in 2014. So one semester, I raised my GPA from 1.18 to 2.06. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If any of y'all think y'all can't do it, it is possible. Just have to have that mindset. You have to, Preach. like you said, write things down. Do what you, if you got goals, don't let anybody tell you, you no, know, you can't do it. No, you can't do that. I feel that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And and just like you just shared your story, don't be afraid to share your story, <laughs> share your struggles, share your successes with other brothers because that encourages them. Go ahead. So I was just gonna thank him for sharing. Cause like that, that's that's tough. You know what I'm saying? Like people, some people wouldn't even like share that story. But and then now my GPA is two point six. So yeah, you're moving on. That's tough. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's how you feel. Like sometimes for me, I can't do it. It's hard, and like it was. Oh my goodness, it was so scary. You know, I could have dead, but not come back to see y'all no more. Come back to ET. I love this. Movie, you know, and I took the semester off. Uh, got right to a doctor. A1C to what it is now. When I went to the hospital, my A1C was at 6. Today I'm at 5.7. Right? Yeah, they said that my numbers right now are at the average person. They said, I think it's up, my go off my pills and go on to the next one. So I applaud you for your saying That's that. good. And I thank you because I ain't gonna lie, times I need it is hard. You know, I'm thinking about all the kids back home look up to me, people that are saying, you can do this, it's hard. You know? so I applaud you for coming here and talking. So. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So I know about A1C and all that. <laughs> so I, I was I was with you with that. Let's get it. And also, I, um, I both of y'all applaud y'all as well. Uh, Tony, I know you and I are wearing the same Bible study, so you know we always talk all the time. And, have a and um, I know for me, I know you spoke of uh, like who you do it for, and I just wanted to like you know throw mine out there as well. Okay. I know for me, it's just the people who really invested their time in me. You know, um, something I'm really appreciative of is like the friends, the family, the support system I have. It really sees that potential in me when I don't see it in myself. And that's something that, like, it just keeps me going. It's like, wow. Um, those people really, like, you know, they really think something highly of me. They think, you know, I can be, like, anything I want to be in this world. I know um, when I was in fourth grade, I got in a car accident with my dad. I had on car collision. Didn't have my seatbelt on. It's something like, those are little things I take for granted. It's like, wow. I remember, like, going and get my CAT scan. I have no scratches. I had no concussion. I just had a big knot on my head. And that's just like the grace of God, like right, I'm supposed to be here. I know uh, last year my mom passed away, and it's like even that, that's something that's just like, everybody's like, yo, Brad, like you got it, like or just stay focused, stay locked in, like you wanna, you, you wanna do something. And you'll be surprised at the things that you can do when you actually go out and try to do them. I always told myself I wanted to work in sports. Last year I found a group of friends, we got a sports radio show now here on campus. Now it's on YouTube, it's on iTunes, it's on all, like, all those platforms. So it's just like, you'll be crazy, like you'll be amazed of all the things you can do when you really go out and try to get it. Because, you know, like everybody said out here, the only person that can stop you is yourself and those excuses that you make. So I really appreciate you taking the time, you know, speaking, giving that motivation. And everybody else is speaking up, saying their stories, because everybody got a story. It's just about how bad you want it in life. So hey, I salute I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And um, this guy right here, when I say stay positive or the hunt, this, that's my man's right here. That's my man's right here. He continually stays positive, always feeding himself positive energy. It's very important, man. I appreciate you. Anybody else? Like, I applaud y'all for telling y'all a story, especially you for connecting. Myself, I remember mean, coming out of high school, my GPA was track. I used track, I used track for my exam to get out. I had a scholarship all the way in Iowa because of an incident in another track of me, messed up my knee, lost my scholarship, had to take a whole semester off. Now I'm at home working at a factory. I'm saying, this ain't for me. I should be in somebody's classroom learning something. Fly with the Shaw University. First semester at Shaw University. I'm out here busting my bum, going to class at eight in the morning, eight degree weather. Before I could even finish my finals for my first semester in the spring semester, got into an altercation. All I know is I woke up in the hospital. Had a, a bruised brain, brain injury, lost an inner eardrum, couldn't take finals, and then I'm, after that I was in the hospital, had a neck brace, can't lift over 25 pounds. On the house, all I know is I wake up, go to sleep, in the bathroom, go to sleep. That's so all I knew. Summer came around, I'm like, ain't no way I'm going back to school. My credit ain't right, my GPA gone. Chancellor come talk to me, said, I want you to come back, see me on your first day. After that, I'm busting my bum. The track coach is hitting me up, asking what can he do for me. I get back to school, the track program is gone, so that's my scholarship for that. And I was hoping to get another opportunity to go. So after that, I'm searching for a new way to get away from my environment that hurts me personally. I transferred to AT. First year at AT, I'm busting my bum. I'm going to the track every day, hitting the gym and this. First person I talk to when I get here is the track coach. He said, he said, he tells me, I'm gonna be on the lookout for you because I see how hard you work. 
but watch out for you when you show me something that's worth that's worth talking about, then I'm holler at you. On the day right now, I'm busting my bum, going to the track, trying to impress somebody that's gonna help me fulfill my purpose of making a future for my I'm making a better future for my future. Cause I don't know about y'all, but you know, everybody got somebody who they look up to them. I got two little sisters from my dad who's the elderly gentleman seventy three. I'm, giving, I'm thanking the Lord for every day he got, the day I know the one day he ain't gonna be here. Mm -hmm. I got little nephews and nieces that's still in elementary school looking at me trying to play sports. So when it comes to me in school, I'm working my hardest to get them to there to show them that anything is possible no matter what situation or what life I first put them through. I appreciate that. something that you want to get off your chest, please find me after this. I'll be out there in the lobby. Come chop it with me, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all.